Hello everyone, and welcome once again to The Ayer's Lair. I'm your host, Jonathan Taylor. Today's video, as the title has already mentioned, is going to be another rewriting video, this time uh, rewriting Direwolf by uh, Kat Kinney. As with, uh, as with my previous videos within this uh, series, I'll be looking at uh, the problems this book has, uh, in order of the level of in, in order of the level of influence they have over the uh, uh, over the book, and then I'll propose various alternatives and solutions that I think help to strengthen the uh, premise upon which this uh, upon which this book is based. Uh, also, I have to issue a spoiler warning for uh, uh, for this book. So if you haven't read it yet and are interested in doing so, I suggest you stop watching this video before you. Uh, uh, um, and then but before you go any further, like obviously, and then watch the and, and then you know read the and then, then read the book and come back, so you have a better uh, better context or better con contextual knowledge and better appreciation of what it is that I'm about to say. If you're unsure what, uh, whether or not you want to uh, actually read this book, I suggest that you look at my uh, uh, at my review of it, so that so that you have. Uh, that you are equipped with the necessary information to find it out for yourself. Okay, now that I'm done with the uh, uh, disclaimer stuff, it's time I delve into the actual meat of the video. And I have to be I have to be sincere here. Um, I think I'm going to be more apologetic towards uh, this book than I've uh, than I've been towards uh, uh, the books I've discussed uh, so far because there are uh, plenty of interesting and uh, useful there's plenty of interesting and useful stuff here. The world building, for example, is uh, it is done is done quite well. It is immersive and engaging, and it does present a, a variety of different uh, directions for the uh, uh, for potential narrative development. Another thing this book does uh, quite well is how it is how it manages to present the uh, main couple, consisting of main character Leia and love interest uh, Hendrik. Or at least that's what I think his name is. And and I really want to take uh, those aspects of this uh, of this book, and really uh, and and, uh, and and build everything and build everything else around it in such a way as to uh, strengthen what I consider to be its uh, uh, what I consider to be its uh, main premise. Uh, first order of business is to uh, flesh out the village, i.e., the community. Uh, Leia is from. Not necessarily give it a name, though that would help, but more uh, look into its uh, inner workings and figure out how its uh, inhabitants uh, both keep themselves alive and keep themselves in uh, fighting shape, so they are, you know, so they are able to uh, contend with the uh, 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 with the menace that the uh, other community within this book uh, represents to them. That doesn't necessarily require that each individual character be given it, I mean, given their own uh, their own paragraph to you know to describe them in depth and give them like a family history or something like that. Really, uh, all I think most readers would need is a few names and a few uh, and a few job descriptions, and from that point forward, they'll you know you know they'll 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 know a, they'll know as much as they really need to in order to in order to delve into this book. One issue that this book uh, does have to address when it comes to the village, however, is how exactly uh, Leia relates to uh, relates not necessarily not necessarily just to it, but also to her uh, uh, to her fellow villagers, because in the book she is somewhat shunned due to having chronic migraines, but she still shows a fierce loyalty towards them when the, you know when the time comes. So that is that is a conflict that I don't think the <laughs> Uh, that I think the uh, the book has addressed in a in an interesting or effective way. My suggestion for that is actually uh, somewhat simple. When it when the uh, characters of this uh, when the characters who live within the village are uh, presented, their uh, their relationship to Alea, if they have any, should be uh, you know should be explored, so that she's so that she's not just stuck with her with her. Uh, Admittedly, very supportive father and her and her best friend slash only friend, as far as we can tell. And now that I'm done talking about uh, one side of the conflict that uh, uh, that defines this book, I want to talk about a little bit about the uh, other side, 
the city of werewolves, who are actually wolf shifters, but I won't delve too deeply into that uh, discussion, I'll just, uh, I'll just mention it. So from now on, and also from now on, I'll be talking to them about them not as werewolves, but as uh, shifters. Um, I won't, I don't, I have to say, it's been a while since I've uh, read the book, and I don't necessarily recall if the book itself uses the uh, uh, alpha or beta terminology, or if it does, whether or not those are just uh, titles rather than distinct, um, rather than uh, distinct biological classifications. However, some of its content uh, leans a little bit too much in, uh, in that direction. For example, aside from the ability to uh, turn into wolves, some of the, um, uh, some of the residents of the, of the, of the city, some of, the, some of its uh, shifter residents, also have uh, additional uh, abilities. And it is typically from, the, uh, from these people with additional abilities that, the, uh, uh, that a leader is, uh, uh, leader is chosen, or the mayor of the city is uh, chosen. And while that would be an interesting idea um, in a vacuum, in practice, within this book, it doesn't really have, uh, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't really have a lot of uh, uh, plot relevance, except, uh, except right at the end when it comes to, you know, when it leads to a specific conclusion. But even then, that conclusion can be, you know, can be reached in a uh, variety of other ways. So I'd rather, so I'd rather uh, keep it, uh, uh, you know, keep it simple, keep it more focused, and just uh, discard the, uh, uh, you know, that aspect of the secondary powers uh, right off the bat. Still, those secondary powers do have an uh, influence upon the rest of this narrative. So how do I, so how do I instead uh, replace them? Well. Well, in order to do that, I'll, I'm going to have to take a quick detour into zoology, sociology, and political history. In the wild, uh, if, you, if you are to look at how wolf packs are organized, they, are typically, uh, they typically consist of a, uh, um, a breeding couple, their uh, offspring of uh, various ages, and then various uh, and then various other orbiters, typically um, typically siblings or cousins of the um, of the main couple. In uh, if if I were to parallel a wolf pack with a uh, with uh, human societies, I think the closest analog would be a, a clan or a tribe. And I think uh, and I think most of you have figured out by now that a a single clan or a single tribe. Uh, would not provide the population numbers for a, uh, you know, for a full-on city. So, or therefore, uh, towards that end, uh, one, you know, one uh, kind of, uh, there's a question that kind of uh, uh, emerges here. How would, uh, uh, what, what kind of uh, uh, governance structure would uh, various uh, uh, clans, uh, various clans arrive at when, it, when they unite to form a city? And looking at history, or uh, more precisely, uh, uh, or more precisely, uh, uh, Western history, which uh, which this book very much, uh, you know, very much uh, leans on. The most famous example of a city being formed by several tribes coming together, or the most famous set of examples, to be perfectly honest, are uh, is a uh, Greek city states. So, so the uh, so therefore the uh, shifter city being organized uh, more or less in accordance to Athenian democracy, I think makes the, uh, uh, makes the most amount of sense. Sorry, got something in my nose. Anyway. And <clears throat> uh, within that context, the, the mayor of the city and the main villain of the, of the piece, rather than being someone who can literally stare people into submission, would instead be a um, a uh, warmonger who has been appointed to that position because uh, because they are because they promise to finally uh, uh, to finally end the conflict between the city and the uh, and the village. <clears throat> why is it why is it why is it that the uh, people of the uh, uh, of the city would vote for that leader in particular? Well, that is a question that could be best addressed by exploring the uh, uh, political world of the uh, 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 of the city. 
and looking at what it is the at what needs the people have and what uh, and what alternative solutions exist to what the uh, leader is proposing. The um, ending and really the conclusion of this book, rather than being brought about by a uh, uh, by a uh, ritual power struggle, would instead come through uh, you know come from in the form of a uh, of a political coup, maybe one where the uh, uh, maybe one where the uh, uh, villagers uh, assist the you know assist the uh, cooing faction from uh, from within the city, given they would have uh, maybe not necessarily similar but compatible goals. <clears throat> it could also feed into a uh, into a larger story about um, uh, about the cooperation and solidarity. But if that's the case. Then there have to be other examples of such collaboration and such solidarity that are that show up throughout the um, uh, show, throughout the rest of the story as well. And finally, the last point I want to address, uh, thankfully, also happens to be the one that is the easiest to address, namely, namely, uh, this story should rid itself of all of its uh, purple prose. There is no need to include as many descriptions, comparisons, and metaphors as uh, you know as this author has included. Um, what I think uh, what I think she should have gone for instead is a more limited, more realistic uh, description of the uh, uh, description of the uh, environment, and then allowed for the uh, and then allowed for the plot to uh, carry the reader through the uh, uh, you know throughout the book. And yeah, those were my uh, recommendations for a uh, potential rewrite. Thank you for your attention. If you, um, if you enjoyed them, well then please like the video. Maybe even share it wherever you think other people will also like the video. If you have anything to add, either to the book itself or to my uh, rewrite recommendations, that's what the comment section is for. And if you want to see when my next video gets released, well then uh, please subscribe. And ideally also uh, ring the bell or do whatever else YouTube will ask of you in order to keep you notified. My books, the first of my own um, Heir to the Empire series, The Next Generation and the Path Not Taken, are available at uh, most major book retailers under, under their respective links in the description down below, right past my social media links, which I also suggest you check out, should you choose to. Additionally, uh, you have the option of supporting me on Patreon, where depending upon and depending on the level at which you pledge, you will receive uh, various perks, such as early access to my videos and scripts, both for this channel and my second one, because yes, I also have a second channel, where I talk about whatever it is that interests me. Until next time, I'm Jonathan Taylor, and this has been The Heir's Lair. <laughs>